Hello and welcome to this video on measurement invariance. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. On Tuesdays usually I talk about topics related to the M plus software and on Thursdays I address more general issues in statistical analysis including in structural equation modeling, factor analysis, latent class analysis and multi-level analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button to check out the description for additional resources. In this video, I want to address a question that I get asked frequently as a statistical consultant, and that is, why is measurement invariance important? And first of all, what is this about? So what is the whole issue of measurement invariance about and when do we need to pay attention to that? Very broadly speaking, measurement invariance means that we have the same psychometric properties of our measures across groups or across time. And so those are the two areas of application where we need to care or we should care about measurement invariance when we either compare different groups or when we compare the same people across time in longitudinal studies or repeated measures data. And so measurement invariance testing is also sometimes referred to as measurement equivalence testing. And this is actually something or this is a term that I prefer because measurement equivalence is a little bit easier to wrap your mind around than saying measurement invariance because then you have to think about, okay, it's not very, not variant, it's invariant. So what does this mean? And then maybe sometimes people also use the term measurement non-invariance. So then you have to think around another corner. And so I prefer the term measurement equivalence because that more clearly gets down to the point, which means do we have equivalent or equal psychometric properties of our measures across groups or across time. If you're familiar with item response theory, then you might have encountered the term differential item functioning or diff, which is basically the IRT term for or the IRT equivalent for measurement non-invariance, when there is differential item functioning across groups, then that means that the items are not measurement equivalent. And so in the context of factor analysis and structural equation modeling, we um, use the terms measurement invariance and measurement equivalence rather than diff, but conceptually they may mean something very similar. So then what is this about? Like, Why do we need to care when we compare groups, for example, with a multi-group factor analysis or with a multi-group structural equation model or with a longitudinal model such as a latent change score model or a latent growth curve model? Why should we care about measurement equivalence or measurement invariance? So and the reason for that is that it is a an apples and oranges problem. So we don't we want to make sure we're comparing things that are comparable. So in other words, in different groups or across time, we want to make sure that our measurements have the same meaning. And so formally, statistically, this is given in factor models when the indicators of the latent factors or the observed variables that are used as indicators of latent variables have the same factor loadings across groups or across time, depending on what we're looking at, and also the same intercepts or additive constants. And so the reason for that is that for there to be measurement equivalence, we have to have the same units of measurement and we have to have the same origin of measurement or the same zero point. And so that is the case when factor loadings, which represent the or are related to the units of measurement and intercepts, which represent the origin of measurement, are equivalent across groups and or across time. So that's those are the things that we need to have in place. We need to have equal factor loadings and 
equal intercepts, then our measurements are on the same scale with the same units of measurement and the same origin of measurement. And then it's meaningful to compare, for example, means across groups, which is often of interest. So looking at whether, for example, one group is more depressed than another group or one group is more intelligent than another group or when we want to look longitudinally, whether IQ scores, for example, have changed across time or depression scores have changed across time as a result of therapy or something like that in different groups or in a single group. And so that's why it's important because we want to make statements about um, the differences, for example, in latent variable means or in latent variable variances across groups or across time. And for that to be meaningful, we need to make sure that the latent variables are measured on the same scale with the same units of measurement and the same origin of measurement. Now, there are different levels of measurement equivalence in the literature. There is weak factorial invariance or weak measurement invariance, which means only the loadings are equal or equivalent. Then you have also um, the level of strong factorial invariance where both loadings and intercepts are invariant or equivalent across groups or across time. And that's what we typically want. What we ideally would like to see is to have strong measurement equivalence where both loadings and intercepts are equal so that the latent variables are on comparable scales. There's also strict measurement equivalence, which is the next higher level where you have not only equal intercepts and equal loadings, but also equal error variances for the indicators. And this is something that is not required for comparing latent variable means or variances or covariances, but it's another feature that is nice to have, so to say, when the variables also have the same amount of error variance, but it's not a necessary condition for comparisons of latent variable parameters. So this is so say the reason why measurement equivalence testing is important when you have multiple groups or when you have a longitudinal analysis. It's one advantage of factor analysis and structural equation modeling and also item response theory models that we can test measurement equivalence and that we can assess, so to say, whether we whether and which level of measurement equivalence holds for our variables and groups. We can identify items that show non-equivalence that might be an interesting um, issue to find. Then we can think about why are certain items or certain scales not equivalent across groups or not equivalent across time. And so this is an important step in an analysis of multiple groups or longitudinal data. It's one advantage of using these techniques that we can test this assumption. In many other um, procedures that we use, many um, more basic statistical procedures such as um, analysis of variance or a t-test, we would simply assume that what we compare is comparable and we don't employ tests of measurement equivalence, but with latent variable models and multiple indicators, this is something that is testable. You can also check out my playlist on measurement equivalence testing here on this channel, uh, where I address more details on that topic, including applications in the M plus software. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then please subscribe and hit the like button. Also check out the description for additional videos and workshops. Leave a comment in the comment section if you like, and I'll see you next time.